Cognac is a brandy and there are glasses that are perfect for drinking brandy. We have the famous the brandy mixer and we have this glass which is a tulip shaped glass. So Messi, what makes this glass perfect for Cognac? So you, talk, you talked about the traditional Cognac glass, you know the balloon shaped glass. Yeah. This is a good glass but it's not the perfect glass. When you do a tasting, this, is, this would be the perfect shape uh -huh. because of two reasons. First of all, you see the round shape here is gonna keep all the aromas and then it goes vertical like this so it allows all the vapors of alcohol to evaporate. Mm -hmm. So it's not too stuck inside the glass. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, again, you mentioned the traditional cognac glass mm -hmm. but uh, this tradition is also evolving. Mm -hmm. The market is, is evolving, the industry is evolving. Mm -hmm. This is why, for example, we also have those type of glasses that are good for to make to have cognac in it or cocktails. Yeah. And uh, you see, you can have cocktails in many many glasses. You see yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. So the traditional way of drinking uh, of drinking martel of drinking cognac in general in the cognac glass is still good, you know, because you can heat it with your with your with the palm of your hand. Mm -hmm. But I guess there's some other ways and uh, I'm very happy uh, we're going to explore that today. Okay, so what is the correct way to hold this glass? This would be the correct way. Uh, some people, some fancy people want to hold it like this, you know. Oh, like a, like wine, like a wine glass? Like yeah, a like, wine. A, like a fancy yeah, way fancy of drinking wine. wine. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, mean, I mean, for, for cognac, it's still perceived as being some kind of a posh uh, spirit and I don't like this image. so. Just have it your way, but if you need to ask me, mm -hmm. the, the best way I think for a tulip shaped glass, the best way to hold it would be like this. Okay. Yeah. And for does this affect? Because you know, with the other glass, mm -hmm. the, the traditional glass, there's a whole aspect of you need your hand to warm up yeah. the drink. So is that possible here? Does it make a difference? When it comes to, ta to tasting, you'd want to taste it room temperature. Mm -hmm. Taste your cognac room temperature. And then just have it like this, and uh, okay. Drink. So, this would really just be for tasting, yes. For regular drinking, when I have as close to your, I believe this would be uh, right here, yeah. okay. Awesome. So, what advice would you give to someone, or tips rather, mm -hmm. tips to someone who wants to select a cognac? How would they go about it? So, first of all, you need to decide how much you want to dedicate to that to the experience. Mm -hmm. So, you choose between. Range of prices, so BS, BSOP, and XO. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second thing is about choosing a brand. I'd, uh, I'd recommend you to have a taste before in a bar or, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, on trade to the bars, mm -hmm. uh, the places where the experience are, experiences are created, and this is where you taste the product, and that's what's creating the, uh, the demand for mm -hmm. the supermarkets, etc. Yeah. So that's where you want to try it before. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when you have the, have the chance to try a drink you, lo you love, then you can just go and uh, ask. Also, you know, there's a lot of, um, of places where you can actually have some very good advice from, uh, from, the, from the people selling the alcohol, you know. If you go to specific, uh, to specific liquor stores, you can actually ask them, I like to have a taste like this or like that, and they're going to tell you this would be the perfect cognac to have. Lastly, it's going to depend on what you want to do with it. If you want to have it in cocktails, I'd suggest you go with VS single distillery. Mm -hmm. If you want to have it neat, it depends on the occasion. If it's for a gift, if for you know, yeah. there's many factors involved in the process of selecting the right cognac. Okay. So now moving into the fun part. Finally. Finally. <laughs> yes. It's a tasting after all. What are the steps? What are the things you need to keep in mind? All right, first of all, I'm going to pour something in your glass. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you agree? What is the correct amount to pour for tasting? I feel like that is such an important question. <laughs> for tasting, you don't want to pour too much. Um, it's also a matter of the, you know, the shape of the, the glass. glass yeah. So you want to be below the level of the of the round. You see? Yeah. Oh, it's like, like uh, between like wine. You also want to stay. You want to. Yeah, you want to fill be up below glass. that, yeah. below the curve. Yeah. <laughs> but immediately okay. I can 
Sorry? I'm saying immediately I can actually already can actually get the aroma right here. now. Yeah. Already. Yeah, already. <laughs> so tasting. Yeah. What you need to understand about tasting anything will be beer or wine or spirits. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of personal perception. Okay? So in France, in some parts of India let's say, they uh, have a lot of spicy food and this affects the way they perceive the rest. In France, we eat a lot of weird food, like we eat snails, we eat frogs. Mm -hmm. It's really good. You should try it. Yeah, yeah we eat that with uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, garlic, uh, garlic butter. It's really good. Anyway, so it has an effect on the way I perceive the taste. Okay. No, so on, on your palate. On the palate, exactly. Uh -huh. So we cannot all hear the same things. We almost all see the same things. But when it comes to taste, it's really personal. Okay. okay. So the way you want to do it. I'm going to tell you what I feel, maybe you're going to, yeah. you're going to tell me about yeah. your experience. Yeah. The way you want to do it, you want to hold it with either a piece of white cloth or maybe to the light. You want to hold it like this, you have a look at the robe and look at the color, okay? So this, the Martel VS Singular series, will have uh, a dark gold color, yeah. like light amber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you have it? Yeah, and I can... I don't know, maybe it's me, but I can see like the a part where it gets a bit lighter. A part that is lighter? Yeah. Oh, is it my eyes? Like there's a dark and then it goes like light. Like. This is maybe because of the shape of the glass. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. So when you have that, once you have that, mm -hmm. you want to nose your, yeah. your, your glass. So the way to nose it, there's no perfect way, but some people actually I, I stuck do that. their <laughs> noses inside. And, uh, but when you do that, you have a lot of vapors of alcohol. Yes, oh my goodness, yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe you like, like this, burnt. I don't know. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> but you see, Martel DS Single Series is very smooth. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to see it's, it's uh, not that harsh, yeah? Okay. okay? Do, you, do you need to do the same thing as mine? You can't, you can't smell it actually, yeah? Okay. It's not necessary. Yeah, because I really already smell. Uh, you can already know it. Yeah. Uh, what do you have? That's the first thing. So you should be able to, to feel it's all about grapes first of all, okay? Because it's 100% made from yeah. grapes, from wine. But also you have some other notes evolving in the in the glass, such as such as um, candied lemon or plums maybe. And again, you can already feel, already yeah, see. Yeah, I can it's smell very the smooth. Not necessarily. Okay, for me, it's not necessarily plums, but it's, it smells like berries. Like. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the last step is uh, about sharing. Mm -hmm. So you know in France, we have some protocols, some rituals, etc. So it's, it's oh, kind really? of boring. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's like, well, I know the one for Russians, they also have a very long... Yeah. And then in front of the glass, yeah, yeah, it's in, a lot uh, of... Color. <laughs> so in France, first of all, you need to clean your glass. Mm -hmm. And when you clean, it's very important you have to keep the eye contact, okay? Okay. They say like... You don't know about this? About this? Oh, I, I do know. Yeah. That you'll, you'll yeah. Have some like bad seven love. years of bad sex. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, you know. Um, I did this. Uh, I was cheering with a friend six years ago without looking in the eyes. <laughs> I'm still suffering from that. So, yeah, I'd recommend you. Okay. Is there I, a particular thing like no, now? Just, if you're gonna just clean. Oh yeah. A particular thing you say. Yes. Is yeah. there a particular I, thing you say? In French, we say "I wish you good health." Mm -hmm. So we say "health." And the French for health is something. Okay, okay. Just, oh, you know it, come on. Just do the thing. Yeah? You, don't need, you don't need your mouth. Come on. Come on. No, I just know what health is in French. Okay. I did a little bit of French. Okay. All right. So, santé. Okay. So I have to look at you yeah, and drink please. while looking at you, right? Uh, or have to. can I be like, we, you know, you can you do cheer, that. And, cheer, then, and then, and then, uh, then, yeah, it's alright. Whatever. It's alright. You can look at the camera and. Uh, but the chair, right. you must look. Yes, you must. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. So that's the first thing I, um, I always say when um, it comes to tasting cognac, cognac, just like beer, just like um, wine, just like many things is an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. Just like coffee, for example. The first beer you've ever had in your life when you were young. It was terrible. It was <laughs> it's difficult to drink. Yeah. The first coffee, same. Yeah. And uh, cognac is an acquired taste. And because it is very uh, rich, of, full of aromas, full of flavors, 
it's very interesting to uh, to try over the years to see how it evolves also in your in your personal range of uh, of uh, taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for me, yeah, it is, that's true. The first time I had cognac, I I didn't particularly like it. Mm -hmm. Same with champagne. I was at a party that was only serving champagne, oh, and I could not drink anything. And then later, in other years, I was like, what? I was at a party that was only serving champagne, and I was just sitting. You yeah. know, so it, it's true that your palate does evolve. For me, now I do love cognac, and I do prefer to drink it neat. Yeah. All right. Taste. So, right. when you have it, uh, when you have a sip, first of all, you don't want to go. Uh, to a lock like this, huh? yeah. you want to uh, want to enjoy, want to respect the process, respect the the craftsmanship behind it, respect the people making the product, and um, there's some other notes uh, that are coming. So it's all about the woodiness. Mm -hmm. So this cognac is not very woody, being a being a young cognac, so it's, it has not spent so much time in a, too much time in, a, in an oak tree, mm -hmm. but you still have this woodiness those vanilla aromas coming from the wood that are really, really particular and really um, characteristics of a uh, cognac. Yeah, and it's very smooth. It's very smooth. Yeah. It's quite delicate, like you have it in your throat, it flows that. I don't know, it's just good. It's just yeah, good. it is, but I already have good. a warm feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had it straight, yeah. neat. What other ways can you enjoy your cognac and um, what difference does it make? So you can actually have it with a dash of water. There was a, an old cocktail, very traditional cocktail we used to make in France. It used to be called, it's, it's still called Pin Allo, so cognac with water, just cognac and water. It actually enhances the, the taste of the cognac. It allows the, uh, the aromas to evolve in the glass, so it's, it's quite a good way to have it. Uh, you can have it with a mixer, but the thing about Mixing with mixers actually mm -hmm. uh, is uh, you need to select the right mixers. That's very important. So I can just like put soda. <laughs> you can put, <laughs> you can put soda. any mixer. Can, no, but you can put any mixer. But the better the mixer is going to be, the, of course, the higher the quality. Yeah, you know, of the you want drink to, is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what you difference does it, it make if I have like on the rocks, like up with ice? On the rocks is gonna kind of numb your your palate. You know, so if you need to taste it properly, I'd rather you have it uh, neat or with a dash of water. Mm -hmm. But I personally like to have it on the rocks, mm -hmm. and I have a stony on the side, for example, mm -hmm. like a ginger beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, ginger ale, for example, is a very good uh, mix to add in it. Also, uh, yeah, there's many many ways, and also in cocktails. Mm -hmm. So there's thousands thousands of ways uh, you can have it. And uh, you can also use cognac to cook, which is quite surprising for people. But you can actually, you can uh, cook, you can you know, flambe something yeah. with cognac. Yeah. So you can flambe some uh, some uh, shrimps mm -hmm. or even crêpe, crêpe flambe, so crepes, you know, like good. pancakes. Yeah. It's very good, very good. Or you can add some cognac in the in the dough. Say the dough. Yeah, the dough. In the dough, crêpe. Yeah, part yeah. of my uh, my English. Oh, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right, so. We've talked about having it neat, we've talked about um, on the rock, then of course with the water, which is not a personal favorite. I don't know why, I feel to me that. Yeah, you like it strong, yeah? Yeah, I do. Like it, I feel like it's weak. Okay, it's weak. I don't know, uh, yeah, I don't know if, if that's a correct thing to say. Yeah, okay. Okay, so can you, what if I wanna have this as a, you know, rather than, because I know like for cognac, you would want. Um, I guess uh, uh, the traditional way to drink it would be after a meal. Mm -hmm. But That's what a if way. that is a traditional mm -hmm. way? Yes. So after a meal. But if I want it to be part of the meal, <laughs> you're the meal. <laughs> no, like if you know what pairing can I think of? Um, you know that I'd be like, okay, I want to cook this, and I'm gonna have cognac. You can again, you can have it in uh, many ways, and you can. I love to add some in, uh, in, my, in my crepes, in my pancakes, add some cognac or you can uh, flambe with cognac, you can, you can, have, you can have it paired yeah, with, so uh, like, yeah. with uh, for example, the Martel Blue Swift, I really love to have it with uh, we call that tartatin, it's a type of apple pie we have in France 
and uh, it's an apple pie with a lot of uh, caramelized notes, it's cinnamon, so it, does re it matches really well. You can also have the Martel Cordon Bleu, uh, which is more spicy. You can have it with something uh, with like fruits of the forest dessert. Mm -hmm. It's very, very good. So, you know, when it comes to pairings, we can go in two directions. You can yeah. either go in the same way or you or can go the opposite. opposite. So, yeah. that's so the beauty of uh, yeah. pairings. You can do whatever you want, basically. Yeah, experiment and see what yeah. works. So, you have to drink a lot to experiment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good advice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you have enough for yet. cocktail culture in Nairobi has really been growing. There's a lot of interesting stuff that's yes. going on when it comes to cocktails. So obviously, like we had said before, one of the ways that you can enjoy cognac is through a cocktail. Indeed. So what makes a good cocktail? What makes a good cocktail to me is the balance. Mm -hmm. It's all about balance. In life you need to do things with balance. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's the balance and it's a matter of having enough spiciness, enough sweetness, enough uh, alcohol strength. And lastly, <coughs> lastly, a good cocktail needs to be a, a cocktail that fits you, that you're gonna like. Okay. Yeah, you see what I mean? Yeah, so what... But not everybody's gonna like, for example, on, on fashion. Yeah, okay, so, I love on fashion, but... Okay. Because <laughs> not everybody... No, it's true, not everybody... Not everyone is gonna like... Um, yeah, you're right, so it's a very personal... It is, it is. ...experience. Okay, so what cocktail are we making today? So today we're going to be making two different cocktails. So one that is a famous Kenyan cocktail, which is a dawa, so the cold dawa, which you normally make with vodka. So we're going to twist it with a with cognac. And the second one is called the sidecar. I'll explain about the history of the, of the cocktail <coughs> while, I, while I'm making it. And the sidecar is a cocktail that was crafted for cognac and with cognac. Yeah. Good, let's go. Yeah, let's go. So we're making the it. dawa first. Dawa first, okay, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So, so you want to cut your your limes. I'll cut myself, okay. Okay, you want to press them uh, to, sorry. Cut them thinner. This, I personally like to, to add a bit of just juice in it. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, does it make a difference when you add uh, juice? Yeah, I like to have a bit of sourness in there. Mm -hmm. You see sourness? Tan yeah? yeah, sourness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then remove it. Okay. <coughs> and you want to press it. What does, what does pressing do? Pressing uh, is just a matter of extracting all the uh, all the juice from the from the fruit, and you want to add some honey. I really like like green forest. Am I allowed to advertise it? Green forest honey. <laughs> I said honey, no honey, honey. honey. Yeah. yeah. So I really like it uh, the way it tastes. You know, in France we have a lot of uh, honeys that come from Eastern Europe or Asia. That yeah. is not very good and this Kenyan honey is very good. Yeah, I believe. Kenyan honey is good. Yeah, it is. It's very, it is. It's very um, fresh organic. I think so. So you want to add some, not too much. All right, okay. Then again, you press it. And the biggest mistake I made when I made my first dawa was to uh, put the ice first. But you don't want to do that because if you put the ice, the honey is not gonna, the honey is not gonna melt with the, with the, Oh, that's, the, the juice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. that's a good tip. It is. It is. Okay, you're going to add your ice in it. Okay, let me add some more. Does it matter how much ice? Oh, it's just a preference um, in terms of ice? I like to fill my glass with ice mm -hmm. because uh, it keeps the glass cooler mm -hmm. and uh, it waters it down a tiny bit when you're and also it makes it easier when you when you stir it. Yeah. Okay, that's it. And you first want to stir it like this. Don't try to stir. Okay. <laughs> I so, can add this like there's a lot of ice the, there. The right way is actually easier when there's a lot of ice. Okay. The right way. Mm -hmm. It's not about holding and stirring like this. Mm -hmm. It's about 
putting it on the side and making it turn inside the glass. Okay? Oh, okay. So you want to use your fingers to try and make it turn. Yeah, okay. Give it a try. Yes. Yes. Okay, not yes. bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all, mate. Can, yeah, okay. So, right. how long should you start? <laughs> Just uh, like a deep. Oh, okay. Just put some uh, get it cold. Mm -hmm. I can already get some of the the, the honey. Mm, it's really good. And it's really the good. lemon. And then you want to add your martel. <coughs> so martel via single mm -hmm. And you're gonna put 45 ml. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 45. Mm, here. Boom. 45 ml. You're gonna stir it a bit more. And finally, we're gonna add some ice in the end of the process. So, we're just adding the ice at the end. Adding yeah. some ice at the end of the process, just a matter of having more, having, look, having it look uh, nicer, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's cooler, yeah. That's it, you have your dawa. The thing is, we have uh, Pernod Ricard, so the group uh, owning um, Martel. Mm -hmm. We have a policy against plastic straws because uh, of uh, pollution. Uh, yeah. So we either use uh, paper straws mm -hmm. or we have it like this. So that's yeah. it, that's your drink. Okay. I don't think I would have a straw in that dawa. I would drink it like Perfect. that. Okay. Before I have it, is there a particular reason why you use this glass? This glass is a, is a good cocktail glass because you want to have it uh, as you're making, you're building it inside the glass and you want to stir etc. You don't want to have a, a tumbler or a cutting glass. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have that because you can't stir mm -hmm. properly. And uh, yes, it just feels good. It does, <laughs> it does look good. It looks now, fresh. Let, let's see if it tastes good. <laughs> Yeah, that is delicious. It's a very delicious. This is like fresh. Yeah. Um, what is that? Fresh. Um, and yeah, something like easy to drink if I were at home and I want to just enjoy my afternoon, like today, enjoying my afternoon. And it's easy to make. Day. Yeah, and very easy to make because literally just three, three ingredients. ingredients. Yeah. 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 So Good. this is a winner. Okay. I let's so. let's see the next the next cocktail. I'll, I'll get back to that. Let's see the next cocktail. So now we're gonna make. A sidecar, correct? Yes. So just go a little bit into the history of the sidecar. So the history of the sidecar. So it's a cocktail that was created, that is said uh, to be created, to have been created in the beginning of the 20th century, mm -hmm. like around 1910. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in Paris, in a bar called Harris Bar, New York Harris Bar, it's in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, the legend of that is there was a general. Uh, an army guy who came to the bar and he said, I need a drink fast and something that can keep me warm. And the, the, the barman, the mixologist, back in the days, he came up with this because it's very easy. It contains cognac, lemon juice, and triple sec. It's very easy and it's very well balanced. Yes. Because you know, again, the balance is very important. Yeah. So I see that we're using Blue Swift uh, for this particular cocktail. Yeah, we're gonna use a, we're gonna use a shaker and we're gonna use also this type of glass. We call that a cocktail glass or a martini glass. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing you need to do, is you can also put some ice in it to uh, to cool it down. Yeah. But uh, the first thing you want to do is to rim it. Mm -hmm. So in order to rim it, you need to put something for the sugar actually to stay okay mm -hmm. send the rim all right and then we dip it a bit. Just do it you have all to right. work a bit and, huh? the <laughs> and then what like turn it yes like this you turn it Is that yeah enough? yeah it's okay okay beautiful yeah. beautiful okay now you build the cocktail the cocktail in the shaker okay, okay. So what you want to do, you have 
uh, shake it full of ice and then you're going to build it inside that so i'm going to use martel blue swift so the SOP thing i've finished in bourbon cast in terms of measures we're going to put it's quite simple also we're going to put you see here 15 ml yeah and here on the other side you have 25 and 45 okay mm -hmm. so we're going to use the 25 ml so we're going to do it twice okay okay so 25 that's once 25 twice so two measures of cognac one measure of triple sec so 25 again one measure of triple sec and then one measure of lemon juice lime juice does it make a difference if you use lemons or limes uh, the limes we have in france are, and lemon are different mm -hmm. so the, uh, using limes is actually better to me because mm -hmm. it's, it's more sour mm -hmm. um, keeps a better balance for the cocktail so to me it's the best option so yeah, you want to press that press that thing again and you have your You have it. Well, just add a bit more. And boom. You have your 25 ml. Let's put it here. Then you want to close it and shake it. Are you gonna shake it? I guess. Yes? Yes? Yes. Okay. So you want to hold it tight, okay? Mm -hmm. Hold it with um, two hands. Do I do I keep this um, afraid yes. of it falling out? Yeah, keep keep uh, keep your hands on it. Mm. There's I no better way of doing it, but a way you can do it is to hold it like this, and when you do it like this, mm -hmm. uh, above your shoulder, it's actually easier. You can make because if you do it like this, you can yeah. hurt yourself. Yeah. You can't make uh, two thousand cocktails like this. Huh? Yeah. So you want to do it like this and shake. Oh. All right. All right. Okay, let's see. I'm kind of worried about this line. <laughs> nah, it won't, it won't. You want to shake. Shake it, shake it, shake it. How do you know when it's ready? Or is this? How do you know it's ready? Yeah. I'm shaking it for a long time. <laughs> what is that? I'm trying to do that, man. I just like, blah, 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 and smell it. Until, until you think it's quite cold. Okay. Until your, your hands come a little more. Oh, yeah. you have it. Now you have to try to open it. You know how to open that. I think there's a way it's supposed to twist it. Yeah. Now you have to, to tap on the side here. Right. Tap on the side? Yeah. Okay, that's not a tap. Yeah, it's a <laughs> gentle a, tap. <laughs> that was not a tap. And you want to strain it in the glass. Like this. Right, and finally, you're gonna use uh, something to decorate it, just like this peel. Okay, sorry. Twist it. You can use an orange peel also, yeah. or lemon peel, or lime peel. Twist it and you have it. Enjoy. Ta -da. This looks really nice. And this is my favorite. Oh, and it smells, it smells good, nice. eh? Yeah, it smells very yeah. fresh. Okay, let's, let's go in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you like it? Yeah. Nice. Good. So, again, it's another fresh. Cocktail. And this is actually perfect for Nairobi, I think. You know, like mm -hmm. where it's it's fresh, it's light, but it's also full of flavor. 
it's yeah. easy to make you know it's very quick um it looks nice well, that's always a win for me i think cocktails should look nice yeah yeah they should yeah. taste I, nice and, and look, look nice, nice. Yeah. yeah so presentation as well as of course it's all about the experience also yeah. you know when you see the bartender of the museum she's doing it behind the bar mm -hmm. it's it's what you pay for actually yeah yeah you don't yeah. want to have your cocktail just handed out like this. You want to see the bar, the mixologist making the cocktail, shaking, mm -hmm. and then you know, taking, uh, looking at the details and uh, taking particular care in uh, crafting the, the cocktail and building it. Mm -hmm.